Hey everyone, it is, what month are we in? April, April 27, 2015. I'm Renee Ritchie, and right now we're going to talk about the Apple Watch. A lot, a lot. So, so much watch. This is the iMore Show. Joining us from the sunny West Coast, which I miss deeply and abidingly already, Serenity Caldwell. How are you, Ren? I'm doing good. Um, it is 75 degrees Fahrenheit outside right now. There are trees I've never seen before there. Oh, yes, this is true. We have many of them in my parents' backyard. Also joining us from what I'm hoping is increasingly sunny Cape Cod, uh, Peter Cohen. How are you, Peter? I am fine, Renee. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. Mostly because we also have Ali Kazmuha with us. She's from the middle of somewhere, Stan, but she's really happy because she has a watch. It's not cold, so... I'm okay with middle of somewhere stand right now, <laughs> for now. Also joining us, uh, I'm thrilled to have the woman who's been waiting, I think, 19 and a half years for her Apple Watch to arrive, Georgia Dow. How are you, Georgia? I'm so excited. What do you see when you look at your wrist now? Okay, wait, wait, everyone, we have to do the shot. Everyone, show off your Apple Watch. Let's go. Okay, everyone has to talk. So they all there we go. Up. We have. I love that the majority of us have the same exact watch. Oh, oh, Peter. I think all the girls in Mobile Nations got the exact same oh, watch. Yep, 38. 38 white sport. Peter's yep. rocking wrist. Um, I'm so excited, Renee. You're Poor so Peter. Sorry. Peter's Peter little little coming. <laughs> Sorry, <got> Peter. <laughs> so, Georgia, your husband ordered the same watch as Peter's. Has it arrived yet? No, no, and I ordered his watch before mine because it was his birthday a couple of days ago. So for his birthday, I got the Apple Watch. My mom ordered the same one as Peter too, and she's waiting until I don't mid May or something. What yeah. one did you order? It was the uh, sp Black Sport. Black Sport 42 millimeter, just like That's everybody it. else in the universe. I'm yeah. so sorry. All right, so let's, come on, let's Apple and Foxconn, make more of them. <laughs> So let's go around the room. George, I'm going to let you go first because I think it was two or three years ago on this podcast, you stood upon the tallest soapbox you could find, and after the iPod Nano came out, you demanded, you, de you didn't even ask nicely, you demanded that Apple make you a watch. Now you finally have it. I finally have. I've been so excited for the I've been Truly, I think it's been about four years that I've been waiting for a watch, and um, I'm so excited. Here we go. Here's my watch face. It's. I'm just so very excited and it lives up to expectations. I am having so much fun with my watch. I'm actually sad when I get an iMessage on my phone <laughs> instead of my watch. See, you, so. but you were saying that because people who are familiar with you know that you are an incredibly harsh critic. I have accused I you of, of litigating conversations and, and movies because like you, you will find anything about it and use any stress fracture you find to break something wide open. So you being impressed with it actually means a lot to me. Yeah, I will. I will take. I. I will just. I try to be really honest with whatever it might be. And Brutal, some might say. Yeah, perhaps so. But no, the watch really does live up to all the expectations of what I've wanted for. Um, I've already. You know, like I'm not going to say that it's perfect. It's the first gen, but it is much more than what I had expected, and I'm loving it. What about you, Ali? What's your first impression? Um, I like it. I. We actually at dinner last night we were sitting there and both of us have found that we are a lot less concerned with where our iPhones are throughout the day, especially when we're at home. Um, I've actually had to use the little ping your phone thing on my watch because I don't remember where my phone is. So, and that I can't actually say that that's been a problem for me since 2007. Nice. What about you, Ren? Um, I agree with all of the above. I think um, I've had this since what late Friday night. I think I was one of the last people in the room <laughs> staff to get mine. But um, no, no. <laughs> one up, one up, Except one up, Peter. Yeah. So uh, I, you know, I've been wearing it. I've actually been doing quite a, a bit of varied activity over the last few days. Uh, climbed a couple of mountains, uh, walked around a museum, um, just spent some regular time like wandering around my parents' new neighborhood with my boyfriend who's in town and like. I am really blown away. Like the the things that I knew that I would really like about it were the direction, like the automatic tap directions, um, so that not having to pull your phone out of your pocket to try and navigate, yeah. um, and just the general, you know, day to day of trying to not <laughs> constantly be like, I need my phone out at all periods of time. And especially when I was at the Huntington uh, a couple of days ago, that was the that was the sort of game changer on Saturday where I realized, you know, two or three hours into our trip that I had only pulled out my phone to take photographs. 
and I hadn't looked, I hadn't checked Twitter once. Yeah, I for those of us who know you, Ren, what, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, that's hugely different. Normally, this is attached to my to my hand. I don't actually ever put it in my purse or my bag. It just lives in my hand or on the table or somewhere within easy reach. Because what if something happens? And like normally, I triage. You know, I'll triage messages, and then if I'm on my phone, I end up subconsciously like switching to Twitter or yes. switching to Instagram. Or How many times have you picked up your phone to do something and then you have to pick it up four times because you get distracted by something else and then I've had Heather ask me, did you look up that address? Crap, no, that's what I picked up my phone for because I yeah. see a tweet or see something else and I start responding and then I get sucked into that. And you get distracted, exactly. And what I've found about the watch that I really, really love is that, you know, I was it was Saturday, but because it was the day after Apple Watch, we were, you know, we were talking pretty much all day um, on the on the Mobile Nation's iMore channel. Um, but I was able to like look, see if this is a message I needed to respond to. If it was, I actually was finding really good luck with like quick soft dictation. Um, which I didn't expect that I was ever going to do in public. I was like, that's too gauche. But like, actually at dinner last night, I was sitting and my, my sister was late and while my, my dad and my boyfriend were having a conversation, I actually went really close and was like, hey Siri, tell Caitlin what's your ETA question mark. You know, and that actually like, saying that really soft, like they couldn't hear it, no one else in the restaurant could hear it, but because I was able to talk right here, and it didn't even look like I was like, Secret communication. Like I'm just fixing my hair. No, exactly. I was, I was like this, and I'm just like, please, you know, hey, Caitlin, what's your ATA? You were like, like, Alfred, get the bat suit ready. No, I was, I was able to like get her order and get her, like, get her all set up before she'd even arrived. And my parents had, like, my my parents and my my boyfriend and our my cousin had no idea that I had done all of this. Whereas if I was texting, it would have been obviously apparent because I would have been here and I would have been stressed because it was my sister's late so I've been like da 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 and getting the stressed look on yeah. my face. Yeah. Um, and it just didn't happen. It just like I I don't know. It's it, I I agree with Georgia in that it is a very 1.0 product and there are definitely some things that are slow and things that are cranky and like little bits in here. But my first impression is just like, oh my God, this is gonna be really important. Renee, there what are your are... thoughts? So um I, I knew I was going to like it just because I'm predisposed to like fancy, shiny technology. It's something right. new. I mean, I bought a Pebble. I've played around with the 360 and some of the Samsung watches. And I, I've, like most of us, I've wanted this since I was five years old. It's just the idea of, you know, Michael Knight talking to Kit or Dick Tracy making phone calls, all that stuff. I grew up on that. This is super heroics for me. But I didn't think I would like it as much as I did. Or I thought, I think maybe I tried, Georgia knows this, I, I try not to set myself up for disappointment. I, I take a pessimistic initial outlook. No balloons. Be, yeah, no, there will be no like Toby Ziegler. There will be no balloons and no champagne. If I see any of that, um, yeah, no. But uh, so I, I was really pleasantly surprised. Uh, I got a review unit from Apple, so I was able to try it out a little bit early, not not Brad. necessarily early, but a little ble- a little bit early. And I put it on immediately. I used it to walk back to the hotel with. Um, I started getting messages. I started sending and receiving the sketches, and I thought that was going to be hokey. Like I thought that was going to be kind of lame. When Apple first introduced it, I thought it was dumb to have a button for it. I, I'm like sending Batman and and Spider-Man heads and Vader faces to as many people as I can. It's uh, it's it is really really cool. And a uh, friend of the show, Guy English, was in California at the same time as we. We ended up. Uh, at the beach, and we did, I think we hiked, and you, I don't know if Guy and I are hikers, I don't think so, but we were hiking for like um, six, seven hours, and I was just checking my watch when something would come in, I didn't have to stop, pull out my phone, fumble with it, uh, I wrote an article this morning about traveling with it, the Starwood Hotels let you open your door with it, I can call Uber and check Uber with it, no pulling my phone out when I have luggage, uh, they finally enabled electronic boarding for Air Canada at SFO, so I had my boarding pass on my freaking <laughs> watch. And, you know, I paid for Starbucks with my watch. It was just, it, it, as much as the iPhone was like the future of travel, this is like the future future of travel. I don't know, George, is that like a, uh, is, is there a psychological term for what I'm experiencing now? Is it elation? Am I going to crash soon? Well, I, I think that we're going to get just, it's not going to be that we're going to crash. We're just going to get used to it. That's going to be the new norm. Um, but I, I just think that it's exactly that. It's going to allow us to, like, I hate when everyone's like, you know, you go to any tech conference and everyone has their phone everywhere. This allows us, as Serenity was talking about, to be more involved with people. And I think that that's the difference between where Google Glass failed and Apple Watch is going to, I believe, succeed, is that it allows us to interact more 
with our surroundings and gets rid of the stuff that we might not be as interested in. And so I can take a look right away and I don't have that regular anxiety of what is that being, who messaged me, what's happening. If anything's important, I know it's going to come to my watch. If there's something happening that's really um, important right now, I can cover it up and just no one has to worry or even know. And it keeps our connections with each other. So I think that it's just going to be, you're going to just get used to this being the new now. Let's hold up some stuff. So this uh, this is what I got. A, Apple loaned me a stainless steel with Milanese, which I quite like. Ah. Let's see if I can get the band to turn on. There we go. I got the. Oh, Renee, it's so pretty. Yeah, you know, it is. The Milanese is. Peter and I agree on this. The Milanese is the Game of Thrones of bands. I mean, it just it, it just really is. Peter wants, I believe he said last week, a choker made out of it. Right, or a headband. Everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is what the watch uh, straps. If you if you get a watch strap separately, it comes in a box. Uh, actually, I have the box here too. I'll put this back together for a second so I can actually show you how this works. And I have human-like dexterity. So you get a, a box like this, and you pull the strap out. And then there's three parts in here. I, didn't ha I don't have one of the parts with me, but it just opens up. If you're listening, it's like a trifold, and I'll hold it up, and you can see there's all three watch. I just drop it on the floor because I'm dexterous like that. But there's all three parts in there. And, then, and the same thing, Renee, if you buy the watch itself, it comes in a large obelisk, the sports one. And inside, don't throw out that little square because your extra watch band is in that little pamphlet compartment that I almost threw out thinking, I don't need this. Yeah, it's I'm three parts, right? So Probably get... worth saying, too, that you can't... I, I heard a lot of people were talking about switching watch bands periodically, like if one person needed the small medium and another person wanted... You know what I mean? It's not yeah. two, you get three parts, not yeah. four. So only the one piece of the small medium, medium large swaps out. So Although I will say that if you have a friend or a family member, yeah, exactly, who um, is Change using colors. one side and you need the other side. Yeah, I was I was rocking for a while. My dad got the blue sport band, so I was rocking a half white, half blue. And you know what? Not appropriate for all situations, but I actually <laughs> thought it looked a lot better than I was expecting. Wait, it, it took you how long to get an R2-D2 band? Uh, five minutes after I opened the band. <laughs> so this yeah, is what, uh... unpredictable. This is what the uh, sport, so the sport, the uh, stainless steel one comes in a box that you open, and this is actually kind of cool. It tells you what it is on the front. You open it, and then you have what I what I believe is a small Apple Airport like device on the inside. It's pretty. It's yeah, like a Mac awesome. Mini. It does. I think it looks Georgia, like a... Georgia held up the inside of the box for the sport. This is the outside of the sport box. So yeah, it's more of a long square. Here's the inside of the stainless steel box. Stainless, definitely. The with the upgrade, you're getting much cooler packaging. Oh, the addition box is something else. I wish we had some pictures. I don't see pictures of that lately. We see if we should find some. Didn't did Kevin get one of those or? No, not yet. Kevin's still debating it because in Canada it ended up being uh, because of they changed the way the exchange rate is calculated. So I think it starts at. Uh, the one he wanted ended up instead of being 17, it's now 23 or 24 or something. Oh my. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. see that being a thing for Kevin. First, the Kevin. The more expensive, problem. the better. <laughs> yeah, I thought that's the article he wrote was the yeah, more yeah, expensive, he did. the better. And then he decided yeah. he was getting married this June. Um, and I <laughs> think well, he, well, he needs his app, but he needs his watch to wear to his wedding. Know, what is so, he going to wear to his wedding? A just a watch. watch, please. Like, like an animal. All right, so first run experiences. Uh, Serenity, let's start with you. You got it out of the box. You started setting it up. What was that process like? Well, that process was interesting because as I was trying to set it up, my dad got it simultaneously. I'm at, over at my parents' house right now. So I'm, like, trying to go through it really quickly and being like, oh, man, I've got articles right. And my dad keeps on stopping me every two minutes being like, Serenity, help. <laughs> That's so cute. Yeah, and the funny thing was, um, this is something that I actually find interesting um, from a user accessibility point. I do feel like the watch on first open for non-nerdy, non non-tech people might be a little bit terrifying um, because there is a lot to set up and it kind of thrusts you into, you know, the watch experience without kind of a, like, here's how you force press, here's how you change watch faces. And yes, there's the, there's the guide, there's the online guide that you can pull up. Um, and it ha it comes out with like a little a little fold out in the in the box itself, but I know my my dad for like ten minutes and my dad is a tech person like my dad works at the Apple Store he has many many Mac computers and has had Mac computers for his entire life, um, but he was still a little taken aback for the first ten minutes and then as soon as he got the hang of it it was like a one eighty shift though, 
it's an entirely too ne new piece of technology. People come at and they're apprehensive and they're like, I don't know how this works, and I feel a little bit terrified. And then once they get the hang of it, it's like, <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like, so it's like minute one through minute five, my dad was terrified. I minute was a five, little surprised there was no software walkthrough. Mm -hmm. Because P Apple knows more than anybody that the first thing someone's going to do with the paper in this thing is... You know, they're just going to, they're not going to read it. Allie is, for, the, for the listeners, Allie just took a bunch of stuff and threw it almost David Letterman-like over her shoulder. Yeah, I mean, pretty much this is, that's what I'm going to do with the whatever papers in the box. Mm -hmm. But, and normally, I don't know, well, historically, Apple products never really did have software. So, I mean, I guess it's not out of the norm for Apple, but then again, with the phone, you don't need a tutorial on how to force touch or a lot of the same things, and we're experiencing this with writing how-to, so don't tell Apple to take my job. So, you know, we'll, we'll, right. do, we'll do a good job on right. it. We'll but, fix that. Just, yeah, we'll just fix follow that. us instead. We'll fix your documentation. Don't worry, Apple. Just wait. Give we us got it. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, this is a completely different experience, and I think they're, they're selling it to people that aren't tech nerds. So you have people that are looking at the watch as a fashion statement. And the app's a little overwhelming. My first experience when I put it on was, obviously, by default, if you install all of your apps, ding, 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 right on your wrist. So, like, I'm trying to, yeah, like, I said figure no to it out. <laughs> yeah, well, I did, I did too, but actually I did. It's not, it's the notifications, because everything by default is mirror on iPhone. So I'm trying to, like, customize my watch face. All right, so one second, like, before you go on, what, what, is your, what does your iPhone notification setup sound like? Um, I pretty much, I don't have anything pop up on my lock screen. Now, like, if I get a TweetBot notification, nothing lights up, nothing shows on my, I hear the noise, but my phone's almost always on vibrate anyway. So some stuff, like, Facebook completely turned off. The only social network I have turned on is Twitter, but it's very minimal. It's, like, only for at replies and direct stuff from people I follow. And But the difference with the watch is there's no, like, don't light up the lock screen or just filter it in a notification center. So the minute I'm trying to do something, it's, you know, notification, 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 mail is turned on. Everything's, you can tweak that inside the settings, but for people that necessarily don't know where to go to look for that, that's a little overwhelming. You can when tweak you first it only a little bit. Like your choice is to, is to mirror or to custom, and custom doesn't have, like one of the things I immediately wanted, and we wrote about this before, is VIP is a mail level service only. Like I can say Serenity, Georgia, Allie, and Peter are my VIP mail contacts, and only give me notifications from them, but I can't do that for messages. If I want messages on, anyone can message me and it'll light up and buzz. Mm -hmm. There's an interesting, so in the, um, in the Apple Watch um, walkthrough user guide, there was a, supposedly, a, there's a setting in messages that's like just for my contacts or from everyone for, for messages to pop up on my phone, that. which is not quite, no, it doesn't exist, like, it exists in the user guide, but it doesn't actually exist in the watch app. Just because you write it doesn't mean it exists. Here's yeah, my exactly. question, too, though. Does, from what I've found, if I mute a thread, it obeys that on the Apple Watch. So if I mute a thread with do not a singular thread in messages or what with again mail and messages are the only two you can literally dictate this with so system wide would be nice but for messages I use do not disturb on a specific thread and it seems to mute it from coming through on the watch so kind of a solution but not really yeah it's a it's a it's a little bit tweaky I mean although it does work I found for me um, actually the switch from haptics to not haptics was a big thing where I just went through after the first day and I tweaked it so only messages would give me haptics and all of my other things mail Twitter Instagram calendar or except for calendar alerts so I had calendar alerts are giving me haptics and messages are giving me haptics but everything else they appear and they go into my notification center on the watch, but I don't get a buzz, which means that the only time that I feel something on my wrist is either if I have an important message that I have to look at or if I'm walking downtown and it's telling me, like, which way to turn. Did you turn sounds sounds off? Oh. oh, yeah. Sounds... I turn sounds off maybe in minute minute one and a half. Yes. Um, I I don't like my devices to beep and buzz, just I out of courtesy for everybody else. Also, I find it really nice, again, being able to dictate silently to Siri um, and not have the beep or anything like that. There is enough haptic te technology built into the watch that you don't need sounds. You don't need someone dinging or t pinging or you know, otherwise alerting you. Um, you can have that all done semi-silently so no one else has to know but you. 
Georgia, um, did you, uh, before we move on, how was your first run, your setup? I loved it. I, I found that it was, I loved the, the interaction with dealing with it. I can see that people that would not be, would not already be set up with how the watch interfaces, that it would be a little bit overwhelming. Um, but I loved the fact that, you know, you paired it by just taking a photo. I went, that is fabulous. It felt yeah, it just so good. for left or like, right hand, right? Because we were worried that people wouldn't know how to set it up left-handed, but it just asks. It just says, which hand are you going to be wearing? I'm like, perfect. I'm ready. And I, I enjoyed interacting with it. I think that at first I did put the watch down for a little bit going, okay, I'm just too excited and there's too much happening and I need to take a little bit of a breather. So I actually took the watch, put it down for a few seconds, let myself calm down, and then went back into engaging because you just want to learn how to interact with it immediately and that's not going to happen. I would say that you're going to have to wait like a good, like, depending on your tech knowledge, like a good four days before you feel really comfortable with each interface. So I'm sometimes, like I'm constantly trying to interact with it the same way that I interact with my, my, my phone. So I'm pressing, you know, the um, digital crown to try to get back to like the mid-ground and I'm like, oh, I'm at the watch face. Do you guys forget that it turns? I scroll with my finger all the time. I keep forgetting that I can use the <laughs> yeah, digital crown. I, I almost never with use finger. the digital crown. Yeah. I don't, I use it for messages. And, and for reading, but I don't use it for interacting. I like using my finger instead. And I guess that, you know, Apple will take a look at how do people actually interact with the watch, what do they enjoy more. And then I find that scrolling with my finger works remarkably well. A tiny you know, I, um, I, well, so I started with just regular scrolling, and then I physically forced myself to use the digital crown. And I found that I like it a lot more from a perspective of, the pro even with a tiny finger, I'm still blocking a third of the screen when I do that. Are um, you using your watch right-handed? Yeah, um, I am. Ask. Oh, yeah, so I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, no, uh, with the digital crown, I, I found that you kind of have to force yourself to use it, but once you use it, it's like it's like learning like the multi-touch gestures on your trackpad or on your iPad. You just don't go back. Um, but yes, as Ali was saying, I am using my watch right-handed, which is kind of a weird thing. Um, from I am a left-handed person, uh, but I, I'm mouse right-handed, sure. and yeah, and as such, like I don't know when I the first time I went to put my watch on, I put it on the left my left wrist, and they it felt completely normal with the exception of drawing. That was the thing where I was like, oh wait a second, this isn't right because when I started to do like to set a digital touch to. <laughs> <laughs> George is getting really ex George's dog is getting really really excited that I'm talking about the watch right now. Um, no, when I started to draw, that was when I was kind of like, oh. Yeah, I was going to ask, how's the draw going? That was the only reason mine went on my right wrist. Yeah, uh, you know what? I actually, I'm actually not terrible with the right hand. Like I'm, I'm learning, yeah. and I kind of, I kind of like it from an internal, like learning new things, becoming more ambidextrous side point. Like I'm very, like I can't. I holding a pen in my right hand is difficult. I cannot draw with my right hand, but I'm learning to finger sketch with my right hand, and that's kind of neat. I may eventually switch my watch over to my to my right wrist, but it's been kind of a fun experiment of like, can one, I do this backwards? Yeah. The one thing I thought was cool is that Apple gives you four options. You can have the watch left or right. You can have the crown top or bottom, basically. So you you can set all those things individually, and it'll spin around depending on how you set it. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter, listening to all this so far, is this is this what you expected? Does this sound easier or harder? Does it give you any second thoughts? It doesn't give me any second thoughts. <clears throat> um, it, and a, a lot of the, the stuff sounds like pretty normal learning curve stuff for a brand new product that we haven't really seen before. You know, the interesting thing about the Apple Watch to me and, you know, how all of you are using it and... and what you're finding to do with it, what you're finding easy, what you're what you're finding difficult, um, is is that um, this is we we really don't have anything to base our expectation off of. I mean, some of us have used uh, fitness uh, bands before, some of us have used devices like Pebbles and so on, but the Apple Watch is really kind of a different animal altogether. Um, so you know, I think it'll I think we'll all be on the, on a learning curve for a little while. So what have you done with it so far, Ali? Um, well, a big thing for me was the gym. Um, that's somewhere where I think, um, and you guys already know this, um, I think Apple's going to have to do some work. Uh, I've traditionally done a lot of fitness band tests for us, and I know the workout app is a 1.0 product, but not being able to adjust any 
kind of settings in there. Uh, for an example, this morning I burned probably five, um, close to 500 calories at the gym and my watch said 280 because I can't change. Like if you're on a station, stationary anything has always been a pain point for basically fitness uh, bands in general. So the Apple Watch does have those same pain points in my experience. You think maybe it's trying to make you work harder? Maybe. I don't know. But everything else from like going on runs, going on walks, things like that, I find it incredibly accurate. But I was really hoping that stationary equipment, um, like so if I just want to go to the gym and jump on an elliptical for 45 minutes or do something else, that it would accurately track that. Um, some companies like Jawbone have managed to kind of have it an intermediate by letting you adjust like the difficulty level so you can say like if you just kind of hopped on and you know started going that would be easy if you adjusted the resistance that would be difficult so when it adjusts the calorie count based on MET values for that um, my fitness pal lets you automatically or it lets you manually edit calorie count so that might be like, okay, say I'm on a fitness equipment and I trust that to tell me more based on my constant heart rate or, you know, whatever, that that's probably more accurate based on what I was actually doing on that machine. I'd like the ability to go into the workout app on my phone and change the calorie count. So either that would need to be a happy median or they're going to have to have some other way at some point. Otherwise, I mean, obviously there's always the solution of going with third-party apps. So for runners, Runtastic has an iPhone or an Apple Watch app. A lot of other fitness apps have those as well. So I'm not sure, and I'm going to do some experiments this week. I don't under, I'm not quite sure how those feed into Health App and back to the Apple Watch and how, because I think part of the appeal is that everything ties together. So the workout app and the Health App and everything gets dumped into one central repository, which is nice. I don't know how nice the Apple Watch plays with third-party apps. So does it do the same in the Health App as it does with the workout app for Runtastic, or does it not dump that same information in there? So that's kind of, I think, a little bit of an unknown, if anyone else you, has. You see, the, the problem, Ali, is that, you know, because your your arms are stationary, it's not getting that you're, you're on whatever machine you're on. You have to hack it and then stick your Apple Watch on your ankle. <laughs> and then you'll be fine. <laughs> or on or on Kaya. Well, but it does. It has like the app, the workout app actually does have like elliptical and different stationary equipment. But as because your option. arms aren't uh, no, on so some ellipticals, did, did your did arms aren't moving. Stick them on your legs. Let's see the difference. But they do move on an elliptical. You're constantly moving your arms. So, so yeah, I'm, I have the I forgot all this. I have the Hue app open right now, so I can like for example turn off the lights behind me just by tapping my watch. Ooh. Turn them back so on good. again. I know I could do that. I, I I have energize, relax, concentrate. So I figure if I put on relax, I'll fall asleep, and then I can <laughs> as I fall down, I can hit concentrate and wake up. But this is the kind of home automation coolness that I that I'm that I'm really enjoying with it. And I have a rowing machine here. I haven't tried it yet. I just got back really late last night, so tonight's going to be my first row on it. And I'm I'm eager to compare with you, Ali, and see because I I can't find those settings either. But those seem like really important settings to me. So well, and it's more of it's not even like tracking the motion because I think if I would have just hopped on an elliptical at a basic setting and I didn't up any weight levels, I think it would have been fine and it would have tracked fine. It's not the motion. It's yeah. like anytime you put any weight behind anything, it has no way of knowing that. Right. So that's my problem. Um, it needs to be yeah, I'll be interested to see. I do. I've, um, I've already wife. had the um, activity tracker trash talk me, saying that I did not make my week's goals and to try to... That's the first thing I'm going to be turning off. Ouch. Like, I don't need that. Yeah. I don't need you to tell me I've already failed. She knows that she's failed. Do any of you don't know you how... judge me. I know. How I was it and judging? The worst part is that I was already in an iMessage when it came up. It actually like interrupted me typing to say, <laughs> you have failed your Move. week's goals. <laughs> try harder. And part of it, I think my, my oppositional nature is like, I'm going to show you. And the other I'm going to sit I'm down for 10 minutes. Right. Yeah. Oh, I How did that already. How is it you're standing? Because I had an experience yesterday where I was actually standing at my standing desk working for two hours. I sat down, and literally within four minutes it said, oh, time to stand. Yeah, I think that's on a timer. Like, I think if it's 10 minutes before the hour, it sees what you're doing and tells you to stand up. Like, it's, it's not smart enough yet. Yeah, so it I, makes me, that makes me very frustrated because... It has the sensors inside the watch to yep. be able to tell when you're standing or sitting. And, like, I technically didn't make my standing goal yesterday, despite the fact that I had been on my feet for the majority of yeah. the day. The problem was for, like, 
for two hours I was sitting at dinner and then for another two hours I was at a movie but otherwise I was hiking but it doesn't take that into account right. it wants you to stand every hour on the hour and I'm like Apple that's not exactly practical like I moving around I'm all for moving around but sometimes like you can't get a standing notification in the middle of a movie it just serenity. doesn't work. serenity well, the trains so run on time in Apple <laughs> go get some popcorn because that's not completely counterproductive I um I was at dinner and I got my little standing notification and I'm like I cheated I like went like with my arm like this and I just walked like did this for a while and uh, it got my standing goal and I'm like okay one That's is hilarious this, right I'm just gonna do it for any well the entertainment thing. value is worth it George if I'd been exactly I was like sure. okay made oh. my goal and I'm like I cheated the system so if Win. you see Georgia somewhere in public and she's doing, doing this. this it's because yeah. she's sat for too long right right I just want to cheat my Apple Watch well, why anyone, I don't I, know. I, I remember George's husband at one point saying that she was cheating with the, I forget what band it was, because she, she talks with her hands, and he thought that was totally unfair. Right, right. I worked out more than he did, though. He did two hours of jiu-jitsu. I'm just going to stick it on my dog, send my dog to the park, and then come back. There you go. Yeah, the dog, the dog will take care of your standing goal. Oh, he's so short. I, I don't think know it was. I think it was Derek Kessler that showed me. He said, oh, you didn't get your Nike fuel points for the day? And he, like, put it on his finger and just spun <laughs> it around really fast. He's like, there you go. That's all you got to do. <laughs> that sounds about right. So, Red, what but else have you been doing? Sorry. Besides that, I think that the the I like the fact that it's trying, like it's making me conscious of how much I'm training, even if That's it's slightly matters. off, which is frustrating, mm -hmm. especially, you know, if you've actually worked out really hard and it doesn't notice. That can actually be demotivating. But I it think gives that achievements, think that, Georgia. Yeah, I love the achievements, but it, I didn't. I actually worked out for five minutes just to get my first achievement of working out for five minutes. <laughs> And it didn't track it. And then I was like, oh, that's not okay. Like, the main thing with the reward system is that it has to be hit for 90% or more for it to actually work. If you are missing, sometimes when people are working out, it can actually be demotivating. So Apple mm -hmm. will have to get onto that. I, want my, I want my sticker. Ren, what else yeah. are you doing with your watch? Well, I've been I've been actually all over with my watch, which is kind of exciting. I haven't used it to Apple Pay yet. That's going to be an adventure for today, um, which I'm excited to. And then on Wednesday, I'll be boarding a plane like you did, uh, Renee. So I, I'm I'm looking forward to doing a bunch of different things with it. Uh, so far, I mean, I went to a museum, which did not have Apple Pay or did not have a um, virtual boarding pass, but it was still a great experience of being. Again, I talked a little bit about this in the in the first half of the show. But being able to wander around, like the first, this, the Huntington Gardens is like this very, very famous estate in um, in Los Angeles, and it's acres and acres of beautiful gardens, all sculpted in various ways, and then also uh, this huge library full of ancient texts and books. And they have like one of the quartos and the first folio from Shakespeare. It's it's a very cool place. Um, and uh, let me tell you, what my museum experiences normally look like is I get really enwrapped in a, in a piece of art or really enwrapped in something, and then I feel a buzz and I pick up my phone, and then all of a sudden I notice that Twitter, I've, spent Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Yeah, I've spent 15 minutes walking around the museum checking Twitter and not actually paying attention to what's around me, or I will see a really cool plant and I'll take a photo of it, and then I'll immediately spend the next 20 minutes trying to send it to Instagram and not paying attention to the other beautiful plants. With the watch, I use this as a camera and as a camera solely because when I got my alerts, I looked very quickly to be like, okay, this is a text message from my friend. I can wait. And then I continued walking with my boyfriend. Or I got a text message from the iMore group and I'd look and I'd be like, Oh, we're just talking about sheeps. Okay, that can wait until later. <laughs> but isn't that huge? Because messages traditionally, like it's in your pocket, and yes, there are custom vibe tones, but you, sometimes you don't feel them, sometimes you do. Sometimes when you restore your phone, they all disappear. Like, I just stopped using it because they would disappear so often. And I, I would have to pull my phone out, and Georgia would yell at me because she's alternative. When, when, when I use my phone, it's bad. When she uses her phone, it's fine. When I, I use almost mine, never use my phone. Okay. Um, so I, I would take it out to check because I had no way of knowing. Maybe it was my Uber arriving. Maybe it was a text. Maybe it was someone saying Imor was down. Every because I didn't know everything had equal urgency. Yes. And now with the watch, you just glance at it and you can. And especially like on airplanes, I would check the time. In Ubers, I would check the distance. I can just glance and the phone stays in my pocket and. I, I'm not doing that little jitterbug in my seat anymore. It's cool. Yeah, you're not doing the multitasking. For the first time in years, my phone was off the table at a dinner last night, which felt so awesome. freeing. Like, that's that's not something that I get to do. And also, uh, to go back to, to walking around the museum, 
I had to talk to a couple different people, like I sent some messages in the I'm More group. I had to arrange a dinner with my mother and my sister. Um, so I was talking to them throughout the day, but what was really nice is like we were walking around um, and I'd get a text message and again, while being able to still keep my eyes up and look at like be with my boyfriend and enjoy the scenery, I, I would be like, you know, tell Caitlin mi piace is fine, let's make the reservation for seven period. And then that would just send, but I could do that while still being engaged. Oh, so question, does your boyfriend have an Apple Watch yet? He does not. He does so not. neither does George's husband, but Ali's <laughs> significant other does. And I remember Amy Jane Gruber saying that she wished she'd had hers when John was reviewing it. Ali, does it make a difference when both of you have it? Um, it does. I, Heather is a realtor, and she is on her phone all the time. It's a constant. Bat she's worse than me. She can. She's probably gonna listen to this and yell at me later, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> but she's on it a lot. I mean, she just she sends a ton of emails. She sends. She's on the phone a lot. She just. I understand it's for work, but sometimes things aren't that urgent. But it's the same thing with us. She'll get pulled in, and if there is an urgent something, she'll start replying to emails and doing other things. And it's a constant battle. Like, do you need to do that right now? Can you just put the phone away? And it goes back and forth. And both of us, like I said at dinner last night. You know, she's like, I don't, I don't even know where my phone is. Like at home, that's kind of seems like that may become the norm because, like me, I told her, I said, I'm only letting important things go to my wrist. So, but like Renee, I would like to have VIP like as a universal. So, but do you have like, do you send Heather the heartbeat, or do you have like a tap code saying if I do tap tap tap, it means come rescue me because this person is boring the hell out of me? Um, we have not gotten that far yet, but it's only been three days. So, I mean, I did figure out, you know, tic-tac-toe is a challenge. You so. do that. So <laughs> most people, yeah. yeah, Allie keeps sending you tic-tac-toes. Not only do you have to play, you have to remember the last move. So it ends up being very challenging. It's a brain training game and tic-tac-toe all in one. Awesome. Yeah. No, you know what? So having my dad have the watch in the in the house has been really fun because we've been able to test things back and forth and also swap bands, so that's fun. Uh, but it's it's interesting. Um, when we were on a we went on a hike yesterday to uh, one of the mountains next to Mount Wilson, which is a big observatory. And my dad is a slightly superhuman when it comes to hikes. So we were, but the entire time we were joking about comparing heart rates. Um, and so I, you know, I took my I took my heart rate while we were climbing up a hill, and I'm like, oh god, I'm so out of shape. This should not be that high. And jokingly, I'm like, Dad, what's your heart rate? And he doesn't even look at the watch. And he was like, 109. And I'm like, you're horrible. And also, you didn't check the watch. He's like, I know, I I did it 30 seconds ago while you were checking yours. And it's just it's really yeah, really fun to to actually be able to interact with things like that. And also um, to going back to exercise for a second. Being able to like check in, being like, how many steps? Like, I got more steps than either um, my boyfriend who had his plus and was Probably counting. Probably a longer stride. Well, exactly. And then we were like, well, you guys are both, you know, six two, and I am, yep. you know, five six, and I'm going to take more steps to attempt to achieve the same amount of distance. Heather gets really mad when I hit like ten thousand steps a day because I'm five seven and she's five eleven. Oh, so geez. her stride is obviously a lot longer. She's like, how do I only have seven eight hundred steps and you already have ten thousand? I'm like, because I'm shorter than you. So for every step you take, I'm taking a step Plus, and a cheat. half or you something. Cheat. Like, like Georgia, you and cheat. And I cheat. I I yeah. change things when you're not looking. So this, um, one of the other things I wanted to mention, and Peter, this is specifically for you, uh, continuity, like uh, we, we all love continuity here, and I know you especially like taking phone calls and things on your Mac. The the continuity aspects of this are really cool. Uh, Serenity was showing me, yeah, Serenity was showing me you could hand off Siri, which is like super mm -hmm. cool, but you can take the phone calls. I mean, if, if you're on messages on your phone, it doesn't go to your watch. If you're on, if messages is frontmost on your Mac, it doesn't go to your watch because it knows you're on, your, right, Seren? Yes, so I want to so I want to say something two things about that actually. One, Apple needs to implement this into their other products ASAP because not having dings on seven different devices because it knows that you're using this one or that this one is open. Oh my god, it's so nice. It's so nice. Um, but the other thing that I wanted to to highlight was phone calls in specific. Uh, a Taking a phone call in your watch is actually not terrible. Once you figure out that you don't have to take the phone call like this, I start like I started like this, and my boyfriend's like giving me side eye, being like, "Ren, you look like you're you're being ridiculous." And then I switched I switched to this to like holding my holding my neck and just 
hang, hanging the phone down here. And that way, the speaker projects directly up to you, and no, but no one else outside of like this area can hear you because the speaker's so soft. And you can just talk normally like you're yeah, talking so, to somebody. Yeah, so you go from secret agent to crazy person with a neck injury. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just keeping it but real, no. Peter. It's keeping Peter, it real. Just bitter. Peter's no. bitter. He can't be both I am bitter. I hate you all. This so you're going to love the My point was you're going to love the country. I'm, I'm, yeah, my point, my initial point, though, is that I was talking for a little bit on this, and then I'm like, we're, we're going from this big open space to an indoor place, and I'm like, well, I'm not going to continue talking where it could potentially echo. Um, and all I had to do was pull my phone out, and then there was a Siri icon right here, or a Siri icon, a phone icon, and I swiped it up, and I immediately transferred seamlessly to the phone. This turned off, this turned off, on, and all it said on the phone was, call handed off to iPhone, and then it went black. And it worked perfectly. It was and awesome. I think that a lot of people will ask that, is like, it actually works really well. The sound quality is really good for such a small device, it's shocking. It's amazing, And yeah. I, can, I can speak just like with my phone on my lap, at, like my wrist on my lap, I don't have to worry, and I can just speak normally, and it really does pick it up, and I can hear the other person that's speaking, which is absolutely amazing. Plus, the other cool thing is that if my phone is in use, so my kids were playing a game on my phone, and I was able to take the call and make calls on my Apple Watch while my phone was in use play, using something else, which was so cool. So it's, it is like doubling the devices Some? if necessary, which I found really helpful. The other option, of course, for folks who don't want to go or who want to go hands-free and wrist-free or whatever you want to call that is Bluetooth. Yeah. You could, yeah. I don't even think it's necessary. Like, if you want privacy, I think that Bluetooth would be something. But if you are in your own home, you don't actually have to lift your hand, wrist up. You, you're going to do it at the beginning just because of habit. But it has a great – the speaker's bit system on it is fabulous. I you did buy it. I don't even know. As we're talking here, as you can see, I'm standing at my standing desk, and I just got a time yep, to stand. I just got that one as well. <laughs> I so, didn't. I didn't I either. wonder how oh, is God. Apple you determining whether or not you're standing? Is it just because you're stationary? Or, which I is imagine, kind of irritating. I imagine it has to do with, yeah, it, it meters out your level. However, I think a couple of us know people on that team. So I'm going to have to do Georgia's thing here. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you just got to go like this and then just yeah. like slowly. I did well, buy a pair of um, I did buy a pair of Beats Bluetooth headsets so I can test the local music and stuff on it because you can transfer local music. I'm going to test audiobooks, but basically only only stuff you can put into a playlist in the music app on your iPhone can be transferred over locally. You can still stream anything you want, but transferred over. So so far it looks like no podcasts and maybe no audiobooks, but I'll test that first. But the thing that's go back to George's point, I mean this really is like it isn't it isn't iOS, but it, it's sort of iOS 8.2 on your wrist and it's got all the power that that enables. It's got all the background tasking, it's got all the networking, all the communication systems, all the frameworks. It's running a different UI the way the Apple TV is running a different UI, but it, it really is, like, a, a, Apple's not making it work the same, look the same, or act the same, but it's built on the same foundations, and that means all this stuff, it has a, there are, of course, you know, once in a while, handoff won't work, Bluetooth won't work, there are all the realities of these technologies that you've already experienced on your Mac to iPad or iPad to iPhone, but when it does work, and it, it's working a lot for me, apps are faster and better than I thought they'd be. That was something I was really worried about. Uh, maybe that's something we could talk about briefly. Have you guys tried any apps yet? I've been using a bunch of them, and they've been working really well. Yeah, I think apps are hit and miss, honestly. Uh, I think it depends on what app you're using. I had a chance to try Uber this weekend uh, because uh, California, you know, is a fairly driving city, and we currently don't have a car uh, since we flew in. So uh, that actually worked seamlessly. Even uh, we had an Uber driver cancel, and a new one was rerouted and the watch kept up with it seamlessly and it was just like, hey, we're trying to find you a new driver. Hey, we found you a new driver. Hey, here's his location. And like, but there are still things that like I wish I could do on it. Like I wish I could zoom in on the on the map location. Um, in general, my my biggest problem with third party apps is they're clearly not as optimized as the stock applications. And because they have to hand off to your phone, you get a lot of the spinning. A lot of the spinning and the waiting. Um, and it's not so bad if you don't let your your watch die, um, and if you have loaded something, like if you load the app, it's kind of like the early iPhone where it's like it needs to cache a certain amount of data. Um, if you load the app, then that works pretty well. However, there are some apps that take longer than others due to just, again, it might just be poor hardware optimization. 
That said, there are some apps that I think work really well on here so far. Um, I'm going to pull out my <laughs> pull out my app thing. Um, yeah, I they really are like, extensions. It's important to point out that they're they're not yeah. real native apps yet. They're extensions. They're and they are a widget in in dash in notification center would be. Yeah, but I do like. I think some of the apps work really well. Pedometer is one of those. Like you can get your pedometer, your steps on your um, in your activity monitor. But I also really like uh, having that. Writing Aid is really cool because you can dictate any word and it will pull up the the definition for you, which I thought was really really nifty and really neat. Calcbot is cute. Calcbot I've found is that there's cute. there's apps that I don't necessarily use a lot on my iPhone that I'm using on my Apple Watch. So yeah. like LifeSum is a good example. I've been trying to track like drinking more water each day to reach a certain goal, and it's so much easier to do it on my wrist than to have to dig through the right. phone. And what happens is at the end of the day, I'm trying to play catch up on my phone because I didn't want to take a break. But if I'm just you know getting a water bottle or something, I can just look at my wrist and tap a glass and you know right. add that. So there's some apps that I actually think have a really good potential to be great on Apple Watch for certain applications. But at the same time, I think there's some apps apps that really don't belong on the Apple well, Watch. Like, oh yeah, they didn't get it right. It's like what? so like the, the the thing I've heard the best is that a computer you have hours on the phone you have minutes on the watch you have seconds and just like you know like a Mac is great for massive text entry and big jobs a phone is good for doing quick triage on the go the watch is like one more step abstracted it's it make your iPhone means you don't have to go running back to your Mac all the time the Apple Watch means you don't have to go to your iPhone all the time but it's for an even more specific brief important subset Right. Of and I think that when you say that, Renee, brief, I think that that's really important. This is something that when you want to do something, you want to have it done quick, seamless, and easy, and then any extra details, you would handle that onto your, your watch. So Shazam was one of the applications that I yeah. got right away yeah. because that's just so nice. I want a music. I want to, like, by the time that I found my phone in my purse, it's already it's the music's over. gone. Yeah. So I have Shazam on my watch. I would say, though, that it is about a 50% hit rate. Um, it does crash a little bit. Um, and right now, it isn't optimized yet. I'm sure that they're going to be working the, all of the bugs out, and it's going to be something that I'll use quite a lot because I'm always trying to figure out what is the name of that song, and I want to get it later on my phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, um, the things that I almost immediately uninstalled from my from my watch were Twitter and Instagram. Yes. Um, <laughs> whereas, yeah. like, yeah, those, like, so I love Twitter. I love Twitter so much. But not on your wrist. No, but I don't, like, here's the thing. What I like about the watch is that it takes me out of staring at the screen constantly. Um, and something like Twitter, honestly, since I've got the watch, I've been checking Twitter in the morning and in the evening, or if I'm honest, Good particularly for you. long. Yeah, well, it's just because it just feels more natural. And when I'm already have this screen, I feel weird being like I'm gonna look at. Twitterific is better Here's, thought out than Twitter is. It is. Yes, it is absolutely. absolutely much better thought out. And I actually like. I don't. I, I think that there's potentially a place for Twitter apps. Like, I think it would be cool, for instance, to see, like, the top most retweeted apps or, or the top most retweeted things or the top most like favorite. Breaking, like, earthquake happening yeah, right exactly. now. Yeah, exactly, or, or news. Like, I have, a, I have Yahoo News installed, as a, but as a glance and as a glance only so that I can see, like, oh, this is the top breaking story in case, like, you know, there's an earthquake outside my house. But, uh, but otherwise, I feel like the watch is really designed for short put input and short output, where it's like mm -hmm. I either want to really quickly see the weather or really quickly yeah. see the top news, but nothing else. Before I forget, right. we got the cables in. So this is the two meter cable. This is the one meter cable. They actually give you the cable that comes with the uh, Apple Watch, which is a stainless steel one, which is nice. So if those are in stores now if people want. I'm going to keep an extra charger in my computer bag just in case. You Ooh, never know. You know, so my first day uh, with the watch, um, I actually ran it down very quickly. I, got, I brought, I drew, I drew, drew it down to about 13% before dinner at seven. Um, and granted, a lot of that was because I was very heavily using it. I was using it for calls. I was using it for texts. Um, and then after that first day, I made a couple of key adjustments, which dramatically changed the battery life. Now, granted, I'm using the 38 millimeter, which means that it already is, has a little bit less battery life than the 42. So I'm already kind of working with fire. Uh, but I turned off uh, Ray's, you know, turn on to at wrist rays, and I actually don't miss it at all. Like, I thought it was really cool the first day that I did it, and I was just like, oh, cool, I can just look at it, and the screen turns on. 
But people who know me know that I talk with my hands a lot. You're from the theater, Ren. Yeah, and when I turn my hand like this, if I'm talking about something, my watch was constantly turning on. Or th when we were walking, I would swing my hand up too much, or I would go and I'd like put my arm around my boyfriend or something, and the watch would turn on. And as soon as I turned that feature off, my battery, you know, I, by the end of the day yesterday, my battery was at 40, 50 percent. We need to add that to the battery saving tips. Please. Yeah, no, I mean, that was, that was really good. And also, um, something that really struck me is I was able to turn the brightness down to the lowest setting yeah. and have no problems even in direct sunlight, um, which is not usually been the case for something like the phone. And I think in part it's because with the watch it feels much more natural to bring it closer to your face if you can't see something. Whereas with the phone you're trying to read such tiny text that even bringing it close to your face just doesn't work. Um, but because of the text size on the watch, um, I again, I was able to keep it low brightness even when we were hiking the Sierras in, in or the San Gabriel Mountains in, in bright sunlight. So, so I feel like for me that like that completely changed my, my battery. And it was awesome. Roaming was horrible on batteries as usual, so I'm, oh, I'm, I'm looking not forward surprised. to. <laughs> so uh, just a quick survey. I'm at 72% right now, and I put it on at nine in the morning. What are you guys at? Um, I well, I also put it at nine in the morning, but it's only 10 in the morning right now. I am at 97%. Georgia, Allie. I'm, I'm at 95%, and I've had the watch on for now three hours. I'm at 68%. I had my watch on. Well, it's noon here now. I probably put it on at 6.30 this morning, and I did an hour workout, which means it constantly measured my heart rate throughout the whole workout. So so we're going to have much, much, much more coverage coming up. A couple of quick notes. Peter, we've got the uh, adapters in now for the MacBook, so we're going to have some stuff going up about how to use them with all the various video things. Yay. And we also have Apple earnings coming up later today. We're going to do our usual live blog, transcript, all the amazing things. But my guess is Apple's going to make a lot of money. No, really, you think? <laughs> uh, I think it's important to note on that that the watch will probably not be included in this. It might be, depending on where the cutoff was where on, on pre-orders. Um, but needless to say, you'll probably get Tim Cook's lovely, like, We've had an overwhelming demand for the for the Apple Watch and we're at supply and our our channel and you know minor comments on that. Yeah, uh, and again, you know, so a lot of the stainless steel ones haven't shipped. The black stainless steel one hasn't shipped. Bands are in really short supply. Bands actually might be a gating factor. We don't know yet. Um, you can't buy some of them like you can't buy the modern ones separately still. And Apple has said they're not going to be breaking out watch numbers at least for now. So we're not going to get any good answers beyond the one Ren already. Preemptively quoted, but uh, yeah, join us here. That's going to be 4th, uh, 1.30 p.m. Um, Pacific, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern. And the podcast will be up after that anyway, so I don't know why I bother telling you. But we'll have coverage on the site. Just check out. Allie, if people want to find you on the interwebs to, to watch your ongoing, uh, to watch your watch, where can they go? Um, I am at iMuggle on all the social things, which pretty much amounts to Twitter and Instagram, um, and every day on iMore. Awesome. Peter, we're going to be back to the Mac, uh, I promise, next show. But in the meantime, if they want their dose, where can they go? They can go to Flarg on all the social things, F-L-A-R-G-H, or on iMore.com. Awesome. And, Ren, we had a spectacular live blog going all, all weekend. We did. It was really fun, and I hope we can do that for, for future uh, future launches. It contained stuff from Ali, stuff from me, stuff from Peter, stuff from Renee. A little bit. Um, yeah, a little bit from everything, um, and and you can find me on the socials when I'm not hosting our live blog on iMore at uh, at Saturn S C T C E R N on Instagram and Twitter, and on iMore for so much watch coverage. Oh my gosh! Between and um, <laughs> my my plane ride was listening to Serenity talk about the Star Wars trailer on the on the incomparable. <laughs> I do do that as well. Yes. Which was awesome. They made uh, Ser uh, Serenity, Dan, and uh, John Syracuse and Jason Snell managed to make a 150 second trailer into 150 minutes of, of enjoyable flight time. We're we're <laughs> painful like that. Nerdy brilliance, Georgia. Where are you? Uh, you can find me uh, every once in a while on iMore. You can find me on Twitter at Georgia underscore Dow, and I also do another podcast called Isometric. Awesome. All right, thank you guys uh, so much. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, the show will be back at its regularly scheduled time as soon as, absolutely soon as possible. In the meantime, you can find the video at youtube.com slash imorevideo. You can find the show on iTunes. Please do leave a rating. Please do leave a review. It means a lot to us, and you guys are fantastic. 150 people joined us at this last-minute impromptu podcast. You guys are awesome. Thanks, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.